Hi Wildings, welcome to or welcome back to the Wilding Tarot channel where today we're going to be asking for intuitive channeled messages regarding the person you're going to marry. Um, my name is Jade Rue Wilding and I'll be on this page doing intuitive tarot card readings for whenever you like. So if you can like, comment and subscribe, I would really, really appreciate it. Um, and if you could especially let me know if your reading resonates, I'd love to hear it. Um, but whenever you're ready to get your messages regarding who you're going to marry, you're just going to choose either pile one, two, or three using the timestamps in the description box below. Um, you'll notice right at the very, very bottom of the description box, I've left brief descriptions of each reading um, for you to use if you're not feeling connected to your intuition today um, or just feeling less connected than normal um, or if you practice any sort of practicing any sort of self-care like avoiding triggers or only opening yourself up to certain readings or anything like that that option is always there for you um so you can scroll on down to just have a look at the buzzwords for each reading to make sure that you end up in the right place um but for everyone else i would strongly encourage you to choose a pile based on your intuition knowing that you might be drawn to more than one pile um, that's totally normal sometimes our particular situation is like a blend of some of the other more general readings here um, so just honoring wherever your intuition is sending you if you do need more time i will leave a freeze frame um, for you to pause on and like give yourself a little bit more time um, if you need it um, but for everyone else just choosing either pile one two or three clicking the relevant timestamp in the description box below and wherever you end up i will see you there very soon hey there pile one welcome to your reading to find out who you'll marry or who you'll end up with um, so if you chose this beautiful orange crystal, then this reading is probably for you. But as always, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. This is a general reading, meaning that there will be some messages here for specific people. Um, and there may be some interpretations of the cards that could be slightly different if your energy deviates from the general energy a little bit more um, than everyone else's. Um, but let's go ahead and find out a little bit about your person. Who are you going to end up with and or marry? Do you please have messages regarding who pile one is going to end up with and or marry, please. We have some messages about who pile one is going to end up with and or marry. Pile one, this person's giving me major breadwinning energy with this 10th house of the world and 6th house of routine coming out. So the 10th house of the world often correlates with our career, but more specifically, it correlates with kind of like fulfilling our life purpose and kind of like what we're supposed to do on earth, like how we're supposed to contribute to like kind of society. Um, I'm sensing for them that like they're probably going to be a bit ambitious, a bit um, career orientated. Um, and they're going to have some sort of like mission on earth that they're here to fulfill. Um, they're also probably going to be like really health conscious and really disciplined when it comes to their routine. Um, and kind of like, I would say a bit like <laughs> meticulous in life. This success is like Virgo energy and this 10th house is Capricorn energy. So they're both earth signs. They tend to be very like practical down to earth, um, and like, Th they think a lot about <laughs> kind of like the nitty gritties of kind of getting things done. 
Um, but I'd say that your person also will be a deeply feeling person and definitely will be like family orientated and want to build like a emotional connection and family with you. Um, Cancer rules the moon, which is like very um, to do with our emotions. Um, and it also rules the fourth house of like family and home. So they definitely have some like kind of protective provider. I want to provide for my family kind of energy. Um, they may, since cancer <laughs> rules the stomach, chest and breast, like if your person is um, more of the feminine persuasion, they might be like beautiful in like kind of chest, stomach area. If they're more of the masculine persuasion, regardless of their like sex assigned at birth, like they might be um, maybe more muscular and maybe have abs or like something, <laughs> something like that. Um, but yeah, your person definitely will be very intimate with you. Um, and they may bring up some stuff that needs healing from your childhood. Um, like, yeah, sometimes the moon can conceal like stuff in our subconscious, um, especially with this healing Chiron placement coming out. Like they're probably going to have like maybe opposite wounds to you in terms of like childhood trauma that, um, you guys are going to be able to heal together which will be like this really um, potentially really beautiful meeting of partners to do spiritual work. Um, and we kind of get some confirmation with this Gemini energy coming out. So Gemini energy corresponds with the lover's card in the tarot. Um, Gemini is kind of it's twin energy. So it's like can be like twin flame energy. Um, it's all about kind of like communication and like getting to know another person on like deeper levels and um, like understanding someone else. Um, Gemini rules the, um, lungs, hands and nervous system. So potentially some of this healing will have to do with, um, like kind of co-regulation of your nervous systems, especially if you're stuck in fight, flight, freeze, fawn a lot. Um, and like, I'd say based on the lungs element, like you're probably going to have to communicate a lot with each other because you might not naturally understand each other's point of views because you are so different, have such opposite like healing, like you will have to talk about a lot of things and like be able to get onto each other's page. And then hands, like I'm getting that this person might either be good with their hands in like more ways than one, like kind of practical sense, but also like maybe um, in a sexual sense as well. Um, or they might just have like hot hands, like whatever you think is attractive. Like if you're attracted to kind of like dainty long fingernails, like could be that. Or if you're attracted to kind of like more masculine veiny hands, like could be that, like kind of whatever your um, <laughs> preference is, it's likely that your person will um, kind of match those expectations. But yeah, this is like kind of lover's, um, lover's card energy. So it's like kind of the meeting of two equals um, in like kind of like divine partnership. Um, but let's get actually some more messages around maybe what your person's physical characteristics and things might be like. Okay, so we have witty, workaholic. Yeah, like I said before, this is like major protective provider energy family orientated yeah so with this cancer energy coming out definitely going to be fairly family orientated like it's definitely a like fourth house <laughs> orientation um advocate they're probably going to advocate for either other people or animals or the environment or whoever like can't advocate for themselves i'm getting and they're going to be very <laughs> seductive like they're definitely going to seduce you. <laughs> You're going to feel seduced by them, even if it's like not intentional. Um, and then we have long nose. So I might have quite a long nose. They might be fairly serious, kind of again with this like earth energy, like can be a little bit serious. Oval face. And they're a bit of a rebel. They might go against the grain a little bit in some ways. And extrovert. So they're going to be fairly extroverted as well. Okay. 
Um, but let's get a little bit more using our traditional tarot. Can we please have a little bit more about pile? One's person, please. Clarify this Queen of Cups energy. And this King of Swords energy. Ooh. And the Devil energy. Um, your person's going to come to you. The Eight of Wands is kind of like a very action orientated kind of energy. And the Queen of Cups I'm getting is kind of like your energy, that kind of intuitive kind of calm um, kind of vibe. Um, but yeah, they're coming into you, like they're going to take some sort of action towards you. Um, so regardless of like what situation you're in, you might be in a separation or in a relationship or have a crush or whatever, like when the time's right to kind of initiate on the, this kind of like wedding vibe, your person's definitely gonna make the move to you. Um, and your person's probably gonna be fairly traditional um, and like probably do all, all, all the traditional things. They're probably gonna ask permission to marry you, um, especially if they're more of that masculine kind of energy. Um, they do really care about like the ritual of like marriage and um, wedding and like kind of honoring, I would say maybe more of like a traditional like family dynamic and traditional family roles. So they will be kind of like traditional in the way that they approach this like engagement and marriage. Um, and like I'm getting that they're also like a very, um, a very kind of like contained, like kind of serious energy person. Like they don't really give in to their um, kind of like desires um, and like may refrain from kind of having experiences for the sake of having experiences. They're much more likely to like work really hard um, and <laughs> like not, not take as many risks. Um, based on this kind of like Knight of Wands Devil energy. Um, but let's see what else we've got for you, Pile One. So you probably like, in terms of this energy, like they're probably not going to initiate on this like kind of wedding vibe until you guys are like in a really um, like stable, steady place. And you'll almost like know that it's coming. Um, this person's, I think, going to help you love yourself, but um, will also be very self-loving as well. Yeah, it might, they might not immediately um, know that they're going to marry you. They might have to have some sort of like realization um or they might just like need to have that realization in terms of the timing as well but yeah they see you as this like kind of sovereign queen um and they're definitely very sovereign as well themselves they're probably very spiritually developed like they've done a lot of work on themselves um and yeah so they're very like kind of woke and aware do we have anything else for pile one please Anything else for Pile 1 in regards to who they're going to marry? Okay, so it, there's a good chance that some of you have already met this person and you're in some sort of like separation from this person um, or whoever you're thinking of, like they've hurt you in some way and that hurt definitely needs to heal. 
Um, but this dragonfly energy is a healing energy. It's about things coming to light, adapting, changing, healing. Um, so definitely like the two of you, it hasn't been like smooth sailing for everyone here, I would say. Um, there's been like some conflict, there's been some pain, there's um, been some things to get over and bring light to and like healing to initiate. Um, but yeah, it's all um, kind of for the greater good and the divine purpose and the divine plan. So know that like it doesn't have to like <laughs> being able to like heal together is like a huge green flag in itself like we're human we're going to hurt each other but the repair that's like the most important thing and you guys being able to repair with each other is like a strength of this connection for sure um but yeah it seems like the two of you are both um overcoming outdated thinking and um outdated con conditioning especially with this healing energy um, like I think the two of you teach each other a lot of things about yourselves and about some of the patterns that maybe you're playing out that weren't helpful do we have anything else for pile one in regards to the person they're going to marry please yeah so Definitely this connection is going to help you um, transcend um, and there may be some um, obstacles that you need to transcend too but it's definitely a like new phase of this connection um, and if you are in separation from this person like you're definitely both preparing for union so like really trust in that process um, and trust in that ascension process but let's get an affirmation for you pile one we have an affirmation for whoop, just like lost half my little crystals off my page uh, of my desk i attract good luck and i am open to receiving miracles and i choose to accept myself just as i am because i am my own beautiful creation um, so you can take these messages as either coming from your person, being for your person, or um, being for you from your person, or whatever feels right for you, just roll with that. Um, but yeah, just like practicing as much self-acceptance and love for yourself as possible, um, and being as open as possible to these like <laughs> miracles that are kind of set in motion for you, because yeah, there's like really good things coming that you can be really excited about. Um, but I think I'm going to leave that there. Pile one, I hope you got everything out of this reading that you really wanted and needed. It's been a pleasure reading for you. My name's Jade Rewilding, and I'll be on this page doing intuitive tarot card readings for whenever you need it. So if you can like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it because it will help me stay on your feed for more readings like this. But until then, ciao. Hey there, pile two. Welcome to your reading for who you're going to marry or end up with or <laughs> whatever. Um, so if you chose this beautiful purple crystal, then this reading is probably for you. Um, but as always, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. This is a general reading, so there will be messages here for specific people. Um, and there may be some interpretations of the cards that could need to be slightly altered for your situation if your specific energies deviate from the collective a little bit more than everyone else's. Um, but let's go ahead and get some messages about your person who you're going to end up with. Spirit, could you please have messages about Pile 2's person? Who's Pile 2 going to end up with, please? Who's Pile 2 going to end up with, please? Who's pile two going to end up with, please? Who's pile two going to end up with? Who's pile two going to end up with, please?
Pile two, you're probably going to marry someone who's very well off or at least very well on their way to be very, very, very abundant with this um, fortune and second house um, energy showing up. So the second house is kind of our stuff, our possessions, our money, our value. Um, it's ruled by Taurus energy um, and our Venus placement. Um, and yeah, obviously the part of fortune placement um, kind of speaks for itself. Like this person's going to be very, very well off or well on their way to being well off. Um, this person's probably going to be um, fairly like stable and consistent and um, able to um, like be very like be a great provider for you um we also have this earth element which is again like very stable secure kind of energy um very much um like powerful manifestation energy it corresponds with the pentacles card so um usually that's kind of like the end of the manifestation process like through the pentacle suit um the earth elements in the zodiac are obviously capricorn virgo and taurus um with double taurus coming out so it's very likely that they'll have a lot of Taurus energy in their chart, or at the very least, a lot of um, Earth energy from those three signs. Um, Capricorn is like very ambitious. Um, Virgo is like very meticulous. So this person will kind of like have their shit together when it comes to especially finances, but just like life in general. Um, they'll definitely be very connected to their life purpose and be well on their way to like achieving whatever it is. Um, your person might also be a little bit older than you as well. Um, but I'd say this um, connection will be very, very powerful, very magnetic. This person will be very drawn to you and you very drawn to them. The solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse both um, represent a lot of change and revolution. Um, the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse both represent kind of the meaning of sun and moon, which is the meaning of yang and yin or masculine and feminine or um, kind of the conscious mind, the unconscious mind, the spirit, the soul. So it's kind of like it's got this real polarity, which creates like this real like magnetism and attraction, especially sexual energy. Um, there's not really a lot of like kind of watery cups um, energy. So like the two of you will probably like be really strong sexually and like physically, like you'll have a strong sexual and physical relationship. And the part that you guys will probably need to work on a little bit more will be the like more emotional stuff, like trying to stay emotionally connected and like understand one another. Um, because yeah, that um, like Capricorn, Virgo and Taurus energy, they're not the most understanding zodiacs. So um, they can be like a little bit more difficult to emotionally connect with. But um, like that's something that's <laughs> so within your hands to kind of um, manage and like come up against and um, <laughs> kind of know what to do with. Um, but yeah, let's get some more characteristics of your person. Pile... Two. We have characteristics of pile two's person, please. So your person's probably going to have very light blonde hair or naturally very light blonde hair. They might have dyed it or they might have dyed it to that white blonde um, blue eyes. Fairly agreeable, so fairly easy to get along with. Cupid's bow. So the Cupid's bow, if you don't know, it's like where your lips have that like on the top lip, it kind of goes like that. It's like a bow shape. Um, so it's kind of like a very well-defined lip. Um, they're probably going to be very fit. They're going to be a good leader. Yeah, I'm not surprised with all of this <laughs> kind of energy here that they're going to be a good leader. They're going to be seductive and you're going to be seduced by them and you're going to be seductive to them and that's kind of like more of this solar eclipse energy they're gonna have like a very like warrior energy so like very much want to like fight for you um and like protect you Responsible, yeah, they're going to be really responsible and stable. Like, you're going to be able to really rely on them. Great eyes. So, they're probably going to have blue gray eyes or like um, one or the other, but like 
potentially in different lights they'll look like more one color or the other but let's get a little bit more about your person using this traditional tarot pile too can we find out Oop. can we find out a little bit more about pile choose person Pile two, it's likely that your path to marriage with this person is not necessarily going to be the most straightforward and easy. I'm sensing for you guys a period of separation at some point, like potentially after you've met them. Um, you could be in this separation now if you, um, if like you're in more in like in that kind of situation now, um, and all of this is like really relevant to the person that you're in separation from. Or if you haven't met this person yet, like it's likely that you guys will need to go into a separation um, in order to kind of like fulfill the full potential of this connection. Um, I'm getting that like when you guys first meet, like this magnetism might be like really intense and maybe bring out some stuff that will be difficult to deal with. Um, so you guys will really need to kind of like hit the restart button and like go away and work on yourself so that you can come back to this connection. Um, much more like full of your own energy first and like maybe have some stuff from your past like kind of cleared so that um you kind of are on a clean slate with this person um because yeah like the death death card often represents kind of cycles beginning and ending um right way up it's usually to do with like kind of the beginning of like activity life kind of coming into form but in reverse often the time it indicates closing the three of swords as well is like kind of a separation card um historically so um yeah there's potentially going to be some sort of separation that you need to take with this person um and then a coming back together like later down the line um so either you're potentially in this separation now or you will go into this separation. Um, and kind of the reason for the separation, um, as I kind of already mentioned, um, is for the two of you to grow as people um, and be able to show up to this connection really well. I'm sensing for your person that when you guys are together initially, they may not be overly willing to share their like kind of wealth and finance and abundance with you like there might be some trust issues they might kind of um yeah like not really trust that you love them for them um and so they're like potentially going to be very hesitant to kind of financially support you um and like it potentially will become a like area of friction but um i'm sensing that like they do deep down want to support you um, in that way. It's just like more about their insecurity in terms of being a provider. Like even though there's so much positive provider energy, like they might not necessarily be kind of where they want to be when um, they meet you and they might take some of that insecurity out on you <laughs> and like um, kind of project stuff onto you that's not necessarily true. They're just... Um, like kind of not knowing how to deal with their own um, insecurities about being a provider. And I'd say for you, um, like you may not initially show up in this kind of like high priestess energy in this connection the first time around, and you may need the separation in order to kind of fully come into that archetype. Um, so like the justice card in reverse is often like kind of a very provoking kind of energy so like the separation is probably going to provoke like more high priestess energy out of you and I'm getting that it might not be like an overly conventional way of doing that like it might be through a considerable um, amount of like 
kind of bringing up your own unconscious beliefs and patterns and kind of like your own stuff to deal with um and your person's probably going to mirror that to you in a way that like <laughs> doesn't necessarily feel good in the moment but you'll realize that it's for your higher good in the long run even if your person like in the 3d doesn't know why they're doing what they're doing or maybe deals with things in a way that they don't really want to um like maybe they end up kind of like becoming a bit emotionally unavailable and you guys have to um and the connection or whatever it is like they might not in the 3d understand why they're doing that but in the 5d it's like kind of part of the plan um and um it's to kind of provoke this high priestess energy out of you um to make you kind of like fuller in that regard um so yeah it's really important that you trust the process when all this goes down like you might be in this now or you might be going to go through this in the future um but no this is all part of the divine plan and just because it's not necessarily easy to begin with doesn't mean that it's not meant to be um like sometimes the not ease is part of the meaning it to be yeah so try not to resist <laughs> this um process like it's serving a higher purpose and it's really important that you just like go with it flow with it like it's not intended to hurt you in any way so try not to take it too personally um yeah so this connection is going to be very abundant your person is going to be very abundant and you guys will find a way to experience real peace in this connection at some point but there may just need to be some like kind of purging of old stuff to begin with and just like let that be what it is um without attaching too much meaning to it or like making it mean something about you or them because it's not it's like about like your path to ascension um like transcending your own stuff your own patterns um and preparing for like a better union and being able to have like <laughs> a better phase of this connection um so this mask usually has to do with people hiding their feelings. I would say that your person um, potentially will hide their feelings from you at some point, maybe initially or maybe in this separation, but know that they unconditionally love you um, and that like they're full of like passion, affection and attraction to you. Um, but the two of you kind of need to work on your own self-love first um, before you guys can really be like together in a meaningful way so this is all part of the process and you just really need to trust it so anything else for pile two yeah though at some point you guys will be able to like talk and reconnect and um yeah you guys will just like naturally kind of fall back together like really don't worry about it if that's you now or um if you're worried about like the future you trying to deal with the separation like it'll just happen like Try not to stress too much about it and just like have a lot of faith in it please that's what spirit is asking of you um can we get an affirmation for pile two please can we get an affirmation for pile two please so we have i forgive the hurt that has been done to me i step away from the prison of resentment so especially if you're in a separation situation with someone now, like it's really important that you're like actively participating in the practice of forgiveness and stepping out of resentment whenever you find yourself in it. Um, and I think for anyone else um, that's maybe not connected with this person yet, um, like really practice forgiveness and getting out of resentment now because you will need that skill in the future. And if you go into that um future space being able to do that like this the separation that you potentially will experience with this person um will be a lot easier to deal with so like take this um now and like do with it what you can um because it will be very important down the line um but i think i'm gonna leave that there pile two i hope you got everything out of this reading that you really wanted and needed um, my name is jade rewilding and it has been a pleasure reading for you if you can like comment and subscribe i would really appreciate it um because that will help me stay on your feed for more intuitive tarot card readings but until then ciao
Hey there, pal three. Welcome to your reading for who you're going to marry or who, who you're going to end up with. So if you chose this crystal, then this reading is probably for you. Um, however, as always, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. This is a general reading, so there will be some messages here for specific people. And there may be some interpretations of the cards that might... Um, be a little bit different for your situation if your energy deviates from the collective a little bit more than everyone else's. Um, so just taking yeah, everything with a grain of salt, um, using your own intuition and discernment. One of the most important things <laughs> when you receive a general reading is using your own intuition and discernment. Um, but let's go ahead and find out more about the person you're going to end up with or marry pile three. We have some more info about who pile three is going to marry, please. We have some more info about who So this person, pile three, is probably going to be fairly well off when you meet them. Um, I'm sensing for some of you, they might be um, getting out of one relationship and kind of slowly getting over it to um, get into another one. So Scorpio corresponds with the eighth house of beginnings and endings. And sometimes when this card comes out, um, or at least I'm getting for this reading, that they might be kind of exiting one situation and then coming back to you or to you. Um, they're probably going to be pretty like conventionally attractive, especially in terms of their body with this first house house card coming out. Um, Aries energy can also correspond with their face. So they might be conventionally attractive um, with their face as well. So first house of um, body face, um, like body being um, first house energy and face being head energy. Um, they, probably have a strong sense of self and identity um, and they're potentially going to be fairly spiritual with this ninth house coming out. Um, the ninth house rules like kind of faith and spirituality but also kind of like travel and philosophy. Um, it's ruled by Jupiter and um, Sagittarius energy. Jupiter is this kind of like abundant energy again and um, Sagittarius is kind of like the forever like seeker and explorer. Um, We've also got Venus and Libra energy coming out. So I'm going to, I'm getting that you guys are really great um, balance for each other. Um, as a partnership, you work really well as a team um, and you do have a lot of deep love and affection for each other <laughs> um, that like, yeah, like you, you just really enjoy each other's company. Venus um, rules the seventh house um, and Libra. So I'm getting that, yeah, that part of your relationship will just be, like, really cohesive. Um, and, yeah, it, it'll be very, um, like, Scorpio energy is, like, very transformative. It It's ruled by um, Mars and Pluto, as well as ruling the eighth house of beginnings and endings. Um, so Mars is a very, like, passionate, driven energy um, and, like, kind of brings out the kind of, like, sex and metaphysics part of the eighth house. So you guys, like, will potentially will have a lot of sexual chemistry and really enjoy each other's company. Um, and together, like, you'll be able to, like, grow a lot. 
um, and transform yourself as an individual um, and possibly like spiritually develop as an individual as well. Um, but let's get some more about your person. So they're probably going to have fairly fair skin. They're probably going to be a little bit hot headed. This kind of like Scorpio Mars energy coming out. Um, they might have like more of a diamond shaped face. They might have like a darkish blonde hair color, or they might have dyed it that color. Probably going to have a strong nose. They're going to be like an intense, passionate lover. Like, yeah, again, sex and metaphysics energy here. Um, and also like this Venus partnership energy. They're going to be fairly agreeable. Like you guys will balance off each other really well. Um, and work as a team really well. Um, for some of you, your person might either dye their hair white blonde or they might have been white blonde and dyed it dark. Or um, maybe some of you will have the, the more of the dark blonde situation and some more of you will have more of the white blonde. Your person will probably be outdoorsy. This is so many. They'll potentially be a little bit of a rebel, charming. teacher so teacher fits into this like ninth house of like philosophy kind of energy they may have like fairly intense like warrior energy courageous broad nose and intelligent cool all right Let's find out a little bit more using this traditional tarot. So as I was saying before, your person might not like immediately reach out when you guys first meet because they may be have they might have some sort of like karma to work out with someone else first. Like they might um, be in another relationship or still be burdened by the pain of that relationship. So um, I'm getting that they won't necessarily kind of reach out and make contact and be overly forward with you to begin with. Um, because yeah, they, they will be like kind of carrying some stuff from the past um, into this connection with them um, that will need to kind of like heal and grow and they'll need to transform or, uh, in, transform it in order to be this kind of like um, great partner and balanced lover for you. So initially you might feel like you're taking on more of the burden of the relationship um, and more of the kind of like emotional labor um, that's okay as long as you're operating within your boundaries. Like it's going to be really important that you know your boundaries and you know how far you can be um, pushed and to not let yourself get that far. Um, yeah, because there will be initially some extra, um, like you will have more of the responsibility for this connection, at least initially, um, just because your person will be dealing with stuff. Um, but this person will end up being a really great team player um, and you guys will be able to build like a really solid foundation in this connection. Um, they just need to kind of become a bit more um, secure and stable within themselves first. Um, as we mentioned, they might be well off. So potentially the end of this connection, especially if they were like married or shared assets or like had kids or something, like they might be thrown off a little bit initially but yeah they will be like they will they're they are in generally abundant person so they will get back on their feet they just might need time to like heal from any of the like physical financial emotional kind of damage um from their past connection um your person might have like kind of all of those kind of damages or maybe just like one or two um so yeah just like 
it's going to be important that you like really allow them the space to heal um, and make sure that you're using a lot of boundaries so that you're um, you know what you can and like can't tolerate and you're really operating within your own boundaries yeah it's going to be important that your kind of person like returns to like kind of a self-love kind of position um, and it's going to be important that you like love yourself and like honor your boundaries like as this relationship is like um forming um but yeah like there's lots of potential for like pleasure and love especially with this like first house energy like they're probably gonna be like really attractive to you and the scorpio energy like bring out like all of that kind of like sex and metaphysics energy like what you guys will be able to build will be really beautiful um, so you've just kind of got to get over that initial kind of difficulty so that you can experience peace and pleasure with each other, like down the line. Um, and just know that it might be a little bit sticky to begin with, but it's kind of just has to be that way. Um, so it might start as like a friendship thing. Like they might be relying on you to like kind of talk things through and um, initially, um, but yeah, I think the their attraction um, to you is probably going to kind of like suddenly change and or they might just like have an epiphany about like that they've been attracted to you this whole time. Um, let's see what else we have for pile three. Oop. Yeah, so... This is very likely to end in wedding bells for you guys. Um, once your person has healed their heart, they will be like super passionate about you um, and want to like kind of create this end game with you. Just know that like they just have some healing to do like kind of before they're ready to like fully go into this with you. Um, and yeah, like there might be some healing that you guys actually do in connection with each other. Um, but your affirmation pile three is I attract good luck. I'm open to receiving miracles. So um, you can take that as either being from your person for you or from spirit for you right now. Um, just being like really open to receiving is going to be really important. Um, and know that like everything's kind of working out in your favor and it's all kind of like for the greater good, even though it might be a little bit sticky to an, uh, to start with. Um, but I think I'm gonna leave that there, pile three. I hope you got everything out of this reading that you really wanted and needed. It was a pleasure reading for you. My name's Jade Rewilding and I would really appreciate it if you could like, comment and subscribe to keep me on your feed for more <laughs> intuitive tarot card readings like this. Um, but until then, ciao.